Hi, welcome back to another 3D printing demonstration video. So in my Vika sculpture uh, video, uh, there was a user named Lockster, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He asked uh, if I could maybe try to print some bearings, give a demonstration on some bearings. And I was curious myself, I'd never tried any bearings, and I wasn't really quite sure the MakerBot could print bearings. But I thought I'd take a look. So I went on to Thingiverse, uh, Thingiverse.com. And I looked through a variety of bearings, and I picked three that I thought would be the most achievable for me, the most printable. And uh, you can see most of the results of that effort behind me. Uh, some of that effort is in the trash. Um, I'll tell you that printing these bearings was the most difficult printing task I've tried yet. Uh, it's not easy to print bearings. There's a, a few problems, a few gotchas. Um, but I did successfully print some bearings and let me see if I can get it right up here so you can take a look. That's a nice looking bearing. Uh, this was printed in place all in one piece uh, with the captured balls and it does work. You can spin it around. It's a little gritty, it's a little rough and part of that depends on how much time you spend cleaning it up after the print and uh, that's what I want to explain to you. The, the problem with the bearings is that you can, uh, obviously the the bearing has to be printed flat on the build plate, right? On the heated build plate, it gets printed uh, in the horizontal orientation. But the problem with that is that the balls are not flush with the top or the bottom. If you see, the balls are recessed, right? That's how a bearing is. Uh, that's how a bearing works. So the problem with that is that you you can't print the balls uh, without if the balls aren't touching the bottom of the, uh, of the build plate, right, the top of the build plate. So what you have to do is you have to print some kind of support or some kind of support structure or a raft or combination in order to have the bottom of the balls supported by something when you print them. And that is what leads to most of the issues that I had with printing the, um, the bearings. It's not the races. The races are pretty easy to print. But the, getting the balls captured in the races and having them fairly smooth is, is quite a task. So uh, I'll show you the three uh, that I printed and I will include um, references to all the downloads off Thingiverse. You can go on the video notes and take a look. And um, I'll show you some of these parts over here, some of the, the reasons for the failures, what, the, what a failure looks like. Um, and I'll show you what you have to do to clean some of these up. The limiting factor, at least in my opinion, is the need for support when printing the the balls, the balls inside the bearing. This this, um, this bearing was printed on a raft with support enabled, although the support probably wasn't strictly necessary. But I had to spend I probably spent at least an hour cleaning up this bearing after I printed it. Um, the entire bottom and I'll roll in some pictures here. The the entire bottom of the print was covered in the raft, and then every ball had plastic attached to it and I spent a long time uh, got some band-aids <laughs> a couple of cuts on my fingers trying to clean that up and getting the balls to run smooth and getting all the extra little plastic out of there and so to give you an idea of of what I'm talking about so here's the a different bearing this is a different model and here's the top surface it looks pretty good right it looks like a nice bearing well, look at the bottom this is the bottom All that mess in there is necessary to print the balls on. The problem is when you when you start removing that, you'll find that it doesn't leave you with a perfectly uh, circular uh, ball bearing. Um, it's still kind of uh, it's kind of rough. It's kind of rough, and so the bearings will break in over time, hopefully. Um, but I would say that these bearings are for low speed use only. Uh, probably good for a filament feed on a 3D printer. Um, low speed uses only and probably not load bearing because if there's any heat created I would imagine they probably wouldn't hold up very long um, here's one that I've already cleaned up and um, you can see it spins pretty well it spins pretty free I've got, I've got two of them they both work fine ok so you can make bearings bearings work 
but you can't crank them out like on an assembly line. There's a lot of uh, cleanup time you have to spend after, afterwards. So here in the table are some of the failures. Um, what would happen was the um, these were printed in this orientation like this. This is the, the bottom facing down. And it would print the, uh, the outer race and the inner race first. And then it would go up a little bit, start printing support for the, for the balls. And then eventually it would start printing the balls themselves. But more often than not, or at least half the time when I was printing, one or more of the balls would get knocked off of the plate. And it would just ruin, ruin the print. So um, I'd, I'd, I'd start it off and it would look good like this. I'd come back in a little bit and I'd find maybe one of the balls got pushed off by the nozzle. Um, or the kind of tenuous support just didn't stick. And so I uh, spent a lot of time uh, re-leveling the build plate, keeping my Kapton replaced nice and smooth, uh, very clean with acetone, um, trying different temperatures, um, various uh, heights for the starting for the first layer, until I was able to get some successful bearings. But um, about half the time I ended up with something like this. Um, because the, the balls wouldn't print. The races would have printed fine, but not the balls. So I have um, a nice collection here of... This is, this is actually a ball bearing, right? This is, was meant to be a ball bearing, and it's just a, kind of a mess of plastic. Uh, and that's all that I was able to get out of those. And here's one of the, here's one of the medium-sized bearings. And uh, hopefully you can, you can see... Um, this was all destined to become one bearing uh, assembly, but it failed. Uh, here's part of the ball. Maybe you can see. You see that little part on the bottom? That was what was holding it onto the platform, and it must have knocked off, or one of the others knocked off. So, if you want to print bearings, uh, yeah, certainly. But you've got to really tune your, your printer. You got to definitely be level. Definitely be starting off at the right height for the first layer. Definitely have the right temperatures, and essentially, um, it's a pretty demanding print job for your printer. So, uh, if you if you're successfully printing uh, a variety of other things, yeah, give it a go. Definitely. If you're having problems printing small things, some of the basic things, maybe even some of the calibration prints, don't spend time on bearings yet. Uh, you can have a couple hours or more invested in, in print time in each one and um, a lot of time spending cleanup. As I said, I spent over an hour trying to clean up this bearing. And if I needed to use this for something, I could. I could spend more time and I, I could make a good working bearing out of it. Um, so just, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I'm, I'm not sure it's worth it uh, given the cost of bearings, but um, what can I say? It drew some blood and it took a lot of time, but I was curious. Uh, if I needed a bearing for a project and I thought that a printed bearing would work, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely print my own bearings because that's why I have a 3D printer. Uh, but you're not going to be cranking these out like on an assembly line. Um, I, I had to dig around uh, quite a bit, quite a bit with an X-Acto blade in there, just kind of uh, cleaning up the inner race a little bit and, and every ball on there trying to get it round and, and smooth. Um, and so that's it for bearings. Again, check the notes. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Uh, I'll show you something else I've been working on, uh, which is QR codes. Um, and that's kind of a fun project, too. This is also, believe it or not, a challenging print. Uh, I had to go through several iterations to get to where I could get a, um, a, a QR code that will read reliably from a cell phone. Uh, but I've pretty much gotten there, so that's nice. So uh, I just want to finish up by saying uh, to thank, thanks to Lockster for posting uh, his comment and asking about bearings. He gave me an idea, something to take a look at. Uh, not that I've got a shortage of ideas. I've got so many things that I, I like to print, it's hard to have enough time to, uh, to get to even a portion of it. But uh, thank you for watching. And if you're enjoying the videos, uh, please subscribe to the BusyBots channel, and that way you'll be notified of new videos. And um, I've been getting a lot of feedback. In fact, a lot of uh, not only comments, but a lot of uh, emails as well based on the videos. So uh, keep them coming. I'm enjoying them, and I'm learning, uh, learning along with you. So uh, thanks for watching, and come back next time. Bye-bye.